lot of fighting. Uh, I think, yeah, you kind of nail like the Enigma getting like a fast vessel wraith pack and just team fighting not around the black hole, but your other spells. Between Witch Doctor Bristle, they've got, you know, they've, they've got the kind of cast of heroes you want to kind of play into this EG draft. The big question is kind of execution, and I do think the ease of execution favors EG. Ooh, and from the way we've seen EG play, they definitely come into this series as favorites, of course, but being the top team of the groups up against, unfortunately, the bottom team of the group. Yeah, it's, it's, it's straight up top versus bottom, first against last. We'll see if Boom can dig their way out of that hole. Crit, gonna show in the mid lane. Oh. No vision here for Boom yet, though. There's five heroes, they're all circling around this Radiant Tier 1. Hook attempted. <laughs> there was someone there a second ago. There's yeah. a, a good try. Good try indeed. Seconds to you can see the cogs. Sunstrike. Oh, that's just to scout this high ground. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. You kind of kind of see the cogs turning there for EG. Like crit walks up. You know, smoke breaks. Like, there's no one here, but there probably should be. What's this boom smoke? They do a super late smoke. They're not oh. doing it to fight. They're looking to just get specific lanes. It seems. I'm not. Honestly, I've never seen this smoke specifically. Maybe it was a misclick. Oh, that's very interesting. I mean, it's allowed Tims to go all the way up top, get in behind EG, and find themselves three bounty runes. I guess smoke for a rune. I mean, you use that first smoke, it you know comes comes back in not too much time. So, you know, it doesn't really cost you too much. It kind of pays for itself when you get an extra rune. Yeah, smoke cycling. We got a big, big fan of that. Put them on cooldown. You can buy more later on. EG, our bed. He's got exhort. I think it just has to be. And we'll be going for that. Ooh, gets the deny in the mid lane against the Sunstrike. Always feels good to start your lane with a range creep deny when your opposing mid uses a spell to try and secure it. Uh, should be a lane where, you know, Lestrick does pretty lo well early on, but once those forward spirits start coming into play, the lane gets quite a bit harder for Yopaj on the Lestrick. It absolutely does. You're going to have to rely on these supports to come in. Witch Doctor and Marcy, pretty good at guarding runes and playing aggressively into the mid lane. It's already up at top. We've got a bit of a go between Arteezy and Tims. Uh, they're, they're dominating Eidolons, putting damage onto this Marcy. But this lane looks like it's going to head back towards the dire side, even with an Enigma here for the Radiant. EG have manipulated the creep wave to keep dragging it back and killing off these range creeps as quick as they can. Yeah. Yeah. Need to pull this lane back, and Tims has been put in a bit of an awkward position, but dodges the hook, so... We'll survive, and just a level one pudge, so no rot just yet, so not really any truth that threat onto his life. It looks like maybe attempting a, a pull, but Dire Creep Wave's already there. And EG, good job. Just keeping that, keeping that lane away from the Enigma and the Marcy for now. Big CS advantage is this mid lane where Yopaj six denies already. Ten and six to the four and one of Invoker. Just early levels, and Invoker will bounce back once he gets those multiple points in Forward Spirits, but has to be careful, because Yopaj has already farmed up a Forward Spirit using the Lightning Storm, but he uses it to get the double rune. So keeping Yopaj away from runes and away from refilling his bottle is a really nice thing Invoker can do, and we've seen this a bit. You send Forward Spirit one way, your hero the other, and, you know, if this Leshrac can't refill his bottle, he can't keep spamming this Lightning Storm to secure creeps or the Splitter. Yeah, a good dodge there from Albert. Just run straight forward. Make sure Splitter doesn't hit him. And that final lane down at bottom, Primal Beast with the Vengeful Spirit up against a Witch Doctor and a Bristleback. So far, Bristle 14 1, but it really hasn't deterred Nightfall from sticking in the wave and farming himself. Yeah, it feels like a lane where level 3 on Boom, they can play very aggressive, like with level 2 Maledic maybe. Uh, but also, maybe once they get this Vanguard, like Vanguard Jackie Bristle is like unkillable, I feel. So uh, we'll see how aggressive they play before this Vanguard. Yeah, and that then gives opportunities for Witch Dog to, to move around, but up at top, Arteezy, chased down by the Eidolons and this Marcy, a lot of damage. Chen is here with level 1 in Divine Favor, hands over a Tango, and they have, again, dragged the wave back. It's just so weird to see an Enigma lane at the opposing tier 1. He's not able to keep it away because of these pulls and movements from Fly. And Fly just not getting the ideal creep. This aura doesn't really do a whole lot with the little Centaur Courser, so... He needs to find something that's going to help out this lane a bit more, but the small camp being blocked by Boom kind of limits 
what he can do there. And they've also got a pull off up here. So really well played top lane so far by Boom. Well, Arteezy will contest it, but that's all about getting this Enigma his levels. Yep. It's kind of like damage has been done a bit as long as you leech the XP. Maybe Arteezy gets a, a creep up here, but some extra neutrals in farm, but not the Ooh. end of the world. Jeez, look at Jackie. They went on him. He drops to like a third of his health, but Nightfall and Crit take like 80% of their HP in return because of these Quill Sprays stacking up. Pretty nice against the Trample there. Just turns his back and starts spamming out the Quills. Yeah, a bit interesting. Crit doesn't have to stick on the Venge. Went for all these Mangoes to just spam with, but against Bristle, I think you probably want to be sending that out as soon as possible. They've got Witch Doctor coming back in. Still just level two. The level three for the Maledict. Oh, he's going to go down. Easy kill. Didn't even need the Sunstrike in the end. Just caught out of position. Yeah, perfect setup. And they're even going to get a lane drag back here, it looks like. As RTZ very close to death in the top lane again. Needs a, needs a tango as he's dropped a branch on the floor. Oh. Fly, come on, hand it over. There we go. Eat the tree. And Fly now with a, with a hell bear. So another, another little aura there. Swiftness. Gonna give that attack speed, but nothing amazing. Like TP the, mid. The branches say you plant a happy little tree that lasts for 20 seconds, but I don't think they're very happy when they get instantly tangoed up. <laughs> A uh, little shout out to Bob Ross. Oh, the hook. hook up Tim's, yep. he's got rebound. Uh, suddenly 2,000 range away from, from the pudge. <laughs> okay, you've got a long range hook. I've got a long range escape. No worries for Tim's. Has to jump away immediately. Those sun strikes now, level three exhort. Can do a lot of burst damage that Boom may not be ready for. And even with that early lead, like you said, our band has more than recovered now. 21-8 on his Invoker. Heading into that, that Hand of Midas. He did stop off for uh, boots and a few little items here and there first. Looks like a Null and Raindrops. But he'll eventually get to that Hand of Midas. Yeah. Not the full greed. Just, you know, waiting, getting some boots so he has that extra bit of mobility. Playing against a Lesh track, you're worried about Lesh gang on top of you, so... Definitely okay with this one. And actually, yeah, he's got Null Talisman queued up and everything. So actually, really not trying to rush this Blink Tag, uh, this uh, Midas. I mean, the gloves definitely suggest he will get it, but stopping off for some little cost-effective items on the way. Yeah, and a nice little deny on that Illusion Rune. So yet again, Abed making sure there's no refill here from Yopaj. As they did have the rotation from Tim's and now even Skem coming into the mid lane. Crit has tracked across from the bottom. Gets a glimpse over onto Skim, see, sees what's going on there. It feels like they really want to kill Arbed off, though. Uh, the Catapult Wave, a bit of a push onto the Tier 1, but Yopage not going to spend the Diabolic Edict. Doesn't want to waste mana on it, just going to chip away with some right clicks. Well, down at bottom, Jackie. Getting chased again by the Trample. Crit, the Sunstrike sets up. He's tanky on Jackie. Will he survive? The Dispose from Tim's. Turn around from Marcy. Has a rebound to jump back onto the Beast. And this Jackie Bristle... Incredibly tanky, you called it. Once he's got the Vanguard up, he is pretty much unkillable. Yeah, they came close there. I think Skem should have ran forward to tank the Sunstrike damage because Jackie almost died there. But great outcome for Boom, getting the kill on the Primal Beast. Jackie surviving, and with Vanguard plus a pulled Tango, he's going to be able to stay in this lane as well. We'll have to worry about the Primal Beast teeping back in. Level 5 Primal has got some good damage, and once again, the Sunstrike will be back up. So Jackie does need to play a little bit cautiously until he's healed up. And I, I really want to see Boom starting to stack these Ancients. And I see Tim's kind of wandering back up towards the top part of the map. Maybe he can get uh, a couple of stacks here on his way over. It looks like a lane ward from EG is going to scout out the movement from the Marcy, potentially. A lot of denies across the board. All these Boom cores with 10 plus and Invoker at Pudge, similar story. That's the Enigma lane for you. Is going, it looks like for the Fast Vessel. Has the Urn of Shadows on Enigma. Does suggest that we'll see a, a vessel as elsewhere crit just gets caught out in the wrong neighborhood. You know, Paj finishing him off. Yeah, a couple of radiant observables there. Really just watching for the venge. Any movements into mid. Safeguarding Yopaj in his laning stage. We are absolutely expecting FBZ here to his arcanes into vessel, deal with the Pudge, deal with his chen and his heels. And actually get the D ward of that lane ward, so. Not, not one that usually gets sentried out, especially this early on. Must be a good bit of homework being done there by Boom. Or just a good read on the game in general. 
bottom lane. They've got level six on Primal Beast. And they're going for Jackie again, but he's moved away from the Sunstrike. And these casts bouncing back onto Nightfall, but oh, Tim's misses the rebound catch with the stun and Nightfall's out of there. Just barely escapes it. They didn't actually wait for the pulverize. I think Crit thought he had it, but it was still on cooldown. So they don't get the, the kill into Jackie and a nice little Sunstrike dodge keeps him alive. And with a couple of heroes showing down there, a bit of, a bit of bold moves from Arbed trying to kill Yopanj, but again, the sun strikes a little off the mark. Tim's was also in the vicinity here to maybe bail out the lash if he was in too much danger. But EG just back to this calm and casual farming. Three cores all doing very well for themselves, but yeah, Boo Boom in a very similar boat. Yeah, we I mean, talk about EG Strap being this kind of tempo one, but it does take some time. Like Pudge wants to get an item or two, similar, similar story for the Primal, maybe less so for the Primal Beast, but they don't want to just go running at Boom quite yet. And catching out Crit again, down near the nice bottom room spot. And like, yeah, just bouncing back between the Venge and the Invoker. Arbed does get the trade on Tim's though. He's Forge Spirits doing a tremendous amount of damage. And Arteezy. He's rotated in here, looking for a hook on the lash, and he'll land it. Has the dismember, catching out Yopaj and Abed. More than enough damage here to bring down the lash. Stone won't land, so down he goes. And a double kill, in fact, as it looks like EG may be thinking of transferring this into a bit of a shove. Chen brings a, his army across. Great hook shot, and unfortunately, yeah, Lestrak kind of thread the needle between two heroes there. He just needed to hit a sun on one of them, maybe, and could survive. There wasn't really much damage left, so very close to surviving, but... Not letting the sun cost him, and now with EG with the Chen in the lane. They've got the push power they need, it forces a bristle rotation. This is the hero that can defend these lanes. Has an arcane ring, but does still have some mana problems here. Just seeing on 100 mana. Arcane ring's up to get a bit more, but... Bristle is pretty much going to stop most of these EG pushes. Oh, the deny. The Alacrity Catapult was, <laughs> was gunning for that tier 1, but a good deny from Jackie. It takes the tower down. Who cleared all the stacks up in that uh, Radiant Ancient area, by the way? I didn't I didn't quite see, but they had a large camp that was like quadruple stacked. Okay, I did not catch that one either, but I... Less track or Bristle, I guess? I don't think Bristle was in there, so I assume it was maybe Less track. Yeah, I was just wondering if maybe like, maybe EG snuck it and stole it, but yeah, probably the Lesh. 4,600 net worth up on Yopage. I'm going straight for that Bloodstone like we've seen previously from these Lashes. Yeah, but he's kind of trading sides of the map here with Boom pushing the top lane. Now EG wants to push down bottom. They haven't really... Without the Chen, it's a little bit hard to do this one. Bristle is actually defending the safe lane, so... Boom doing a good job defending a lot of the towers on the map, even though they couldn't keep the mid tier one tower alive. Yeah, trying to cut the wave, and I mean, Crit's even pulling. I don't know if he's trying to stack up a couple of creep waves here to expand on their push down there. Abed, pretty low on mana, can't really join. He's, like you, like you mentioned in the draft, being a bit more greedy, has the Hand of Midas. Going to be farming the jungle for the most part, the next five, six minutes. And it's Boom making the move down bottom with a smoke. Scam, not level six yet. 12 minutes in feels a little rough. But if he gets a couple of kills here, it'll all pay off. Neopage, the first one to break the smoke. Immediate onslaught away from Nightfall. Crit on the run, but the rebound catches him. Vengeful Spirit going to be the casualty here for EG. Boom bringing a lot of numbers down there, though. They're going to try to follow this knot with the tier 1 tower now as well. With the Edict there, there's not any signs of a defense from EG, at least not for the time being. They've got Arteezy farming in the top lane on Pudge, but that his rotation just feels like there's nothing they can really do to defend some of these towers. And probably doesn't really feel confident fighting into this Bristleback. The level as well as farm differential between them just really favoring Boom right now. Jackie's just had such a good game considering those ganks failed on him earlier in, the, in this game. Yeah, and we, we had just, we've not seen Black Hole or anything, right? FBZ's had a pretty free time up top. It's not been spectacular, but it's not been anywhere, you know, it's not been a disaster or anything like that. He's zero, zero, zero. And now he gets free range just to shove out this dead lane all the way across towards tier two. And he's got a good vision up there. So that means the rest of Boom can play as that group of four down in the bottom jungle. No, no division until now. One gets placed in the large camp, spotting Yopage. RTZ crit, lining up the hook, but missing it. 
And crit with a swap. The rebound's there. Bouncing across. Back into the pudge. Sunstrike comes and Tyrion's is down. The split earth lands in onto the Venge with a heal from the Chen. Keeping crit alive. FBC's looking for the black hole, but he can't quite find it. No opportunity for him while Arteezy opening up on Jackie. You've got to be wary, though, of this level 10 Bristlebag starting to shred you as Nightfall's initiated into the back. Onslaughting across the Witch Doctor, so far losing the two position fours. But Jackie, the hero here with the ability to give chase. And just another slow something, a touch of stun, or a catch on the Nightfall would have allowed them to kill him. But EG, they have evacuated. You can see, though, this Bristle's a big problem. Like, he's just zoning out half the EG lineup, like Primal Beast gets onto onto the back lines here, but nobody can really follow him up because Bristle, if you run in, Bristle's just going to stack up all these quills the entire fight. Jackie never comes close to dying. He's, you know, being kind of kited a little bit on Bristle, playing around like the, the Pudge and the Rot. It's not like Pudge comes close to dying either, but really limiting EG's ability to force these fights and make plays around the Primal Beast ultimate. Yeah, both teams are kind of circling around each other, looking... Looking for that one pick off, the one hero they really want to charge on. And boom, kind of aiming for Arbed, the squishy invoker with as Midas Travels is a pretty juicy target. But he's always keeping himself hidden. Well, yeah, Yopage and FBZ. And a good job by them to not get caught out by the Nightfall Primal Beast. Just having the vessel already puts, I think, Boom in a pretty good spot where they feel like, you know, you can actually bring your Enigma to some of these team fights, max out, max out Malefice. Uh, combined with the vessels, just some nice con kind of control to play around. And even just the level one Midnight Pulse has this 5% DPS, which is pretty good against some of these tankier strength cores on the EG side. Yeah, they're only going to get tankier. BKB is a couple hundred gold away for the Primal Beast. Aghanim Scepter, a little distant for RTZ, but once he gets that, his damage output ramps up incredibly. And of yeah, course, you've already got this mech on Chen. <laughs> The greatest thing about Chen is like 10 minutes in, you've got this burst heal from Hand of God and Mech. Yeah, and he's almost got the shard now as well. He's rushing into I wonder if there's a specific ancient he has in mind that he really wants to use this game. <laughs> Granite Golem, more HP, more yeah. tankiness. I mean, Bristle's okay with that. Oh, longer fights, I mean, that's, that's Bristle's wheelhouse. Yeah, that's true. Maybe just split pushing with some ancient black dragon or something, but... See what it's going to be. I mean, that like, often you just take whatever ancients are there and available to you. Now he's going to stack them for now. Build it up for later on. Yeah, it's always interesting to see Radiant teams play in this bottom jungle. That they're, they're trying to match EG's movements down there because this is where you know, Arteezy wants to farm. It's where Primal Beast wants to be pushing out this bottom lane. And they're keeping FBZ down here and trying to connect into the Enigma. But they're now realizing, you know, 16 minutes in, it's time to start playing that opposite side of the map. Maybe get some ward coverage in that top jungle, and it's about prepping for that Roshan. Yeah, it's always 20 minutes in. <laughs> You're thinking about it's Rosh. Coming. Yeah, I think particularly uh, a bristle back draft on the EG side. Not the you know, they've got invo extra invokers, so they can do it all right. But any team who wins a team fight around the Rosh pit will definitely have the damage to to clear it out. So very important to get that vision going and set yourselves up to. Have a good Roshan fight. They'd love to get a Blink Dagger on Enigma if you're a Boom. Even without the, the BKB, there's still potential for a Blink Hole that causes some serious problems for EG in a fight. Oh, it looks like FBZ is going to slip past the smoke, though. EG all coming down here. And this is yeah, going to give up a lot of room. And over at the Ancients being stacked up on the Radiant side, top lane pushed in. So Abed shows up at top. And now it's down to Boom. What do they want to do? Tim's a TP down. Rebounds onto Arteezy, but the damage from the trample and following with the Sunstrike. They do get a good death ward in onto Fly. Yopage and FBZ trying to find a bigger target, but they can't. It's just the supports left. EG will sacrifice their Chen and Venge. And Jackie has like 300 damage per hit. Just crushes crit. Yeah. Definitely a bit of luck almost involved for that fight. Um, just because the fact that EG... They had this great smoke and get some vision down, now dewarded, but the hero they run into is Marcy. It's a support. If that was, they were so close to running first into the Enigma and then into the last track, and if they find one of those two heroes, they can probably win the team fight or at least get a better trade out of it, but just getting Marcy means they've committed underneath the tier 2 tower where Boom can just like five man TP in, take a fight, and with Bristleback having an Axe Scepter, they're just, you know, there's nothing you can do to address this Bristleback. And, Boom do a good job counterplaying, and they're ready to kind of press forward now. They've got all the items that they really need for their early game. It's it's go time. 
Yeah, Bristle level 13. Incredibly big Bristle back here. I'm going in for that tier one mid. I did push forward into the enemy ancients a little bit. High ground ward there as well. I saw crit pinging Arteezy saying, hey, don't don't farm that camp. They're coming for you. Good scout there with a the wave of terror though from crit and EG. They're all prepared for this. Not going to defend their tower, but looking for the following fight. Just despite not dying, it just feels like Arteezy's pudge is just a little bit under farmed. I mean, part of that is just going to be the Enigma effect where you're playing against this constant denies. 30 plus denies on FBZ's Enigma, so it's just always frustrating for carries to play into it, but just being a bit under farmed and slowing down some of EG's kind of momentum and the plays they can make because, yeah, he doesn't have that Ag Scepter yet. Uh, ideally, you'd want to have the Ags and already be building towards your next item, whether it's your BKB, your Blink. Playing Tim's. You get solo killed. Possible punish coming their way. Nightfall doesn't have a TP. Jackie, always oh, hunting. Oh, he's a little too slow, though. Out. Yeah. Nightfall's away from there. It was his first BKB used for a kill on the Marcy. I think Nightfall's okay with that. The fact that he's forced rotations and, and that follows on from what you were saying about RTZ. Bottom right-hand corner of the map is completely free for him now to finish off that Ags as they've drawn all the attention from Boom elsewhere. This, this is kind of where Boom want to be, though. Clearing Absolutely. out the Chen army in this top jungle. We were talking about Roshan, about guarding their Ancients. This is the primary spot for the Radiant team to do just that. So one downside is they've not really kept their creep wave pushing top if they want to pressure the tier two, but it does seem like EG want to fight under this tower. They've keep beating their pudge. They've got the meat hook available. If they can reel somebody in, this could be a good fight for them. They've smoked up. They're charging forward. Yeah, Arteezy solo smokes, looking for Yopaj and lands the hook in on him. Dismember onslaught with the trample, the black hole, though it's a good one, but Yopaj, he gets sniped out by Arbet. Primal Beast is about to die, though, to the Death Warden Maledict, while this Scam Witch Doctor into the Voodoo Switcheroo will get away from Crit. Purge is still looking for another hook from the high ground, lines it up, lands it onto the Witch Doctor, Scam dragged back in. And EG with some big kills here, aiming for Jackie, swapping the bristle into the middle of them. Another dismember from Arteezy, but Jackie's is so incredibly tanky. No, the Forge Spirits, they got the minus armor on him. That's going to be the answer to the bristle back here. Too much damage coming in with the minus armor too, and they're not done. They're chasing for more. They want Tim's. No rebound for a couple of seconds, but doesn't look like they'll be able to chase him down. But both bristle and Lish getting picked off there. EG just playing smart Dota, playing around their high ground. Reeling one with the meat hook. That was an amazing black hole. Full duration onto two enemy cores, but they just don't have the damage without the Leshrac alive. They need a way to kind of deal with that hook in and save the Leshrac's life. He just gets too low too fast, and not being able to cancel that dismember ends up being a big, big problem for Boom. Yeah, huge issues. Just using that terrain to their advantage, EG. Sitting on the staircase, you can see Crit and Arba there skirting the edge of the fight, but we're back into live and Knight falls in. Aiming for Skem, they've got the Voodoo Switcheroo again. Three seconds of invulnerability, but it will end with his death nonetheless. And Roshan sat at around half health. It looks like EG are going to give up on this because Arteezy and Nightfall are a little uh, low on resources. EG is saying they can't actually force it, and now the smoke from Boom, they're the ones pressing forward now. They know he doesn't have BKB. So a catch up to Nightfall here is huge for them. Tanky beast, but he will still die. Crit. Oh, crit too. Crit split earth in the trees. Yeah, <laughs> going straight for them. Crit, what can you do? 21 charges. Malefice and the Bristleback chasing, though. That should be the end of the Vengeful Spirit's life. The Hurricane back from Fly. I don't believe that's going to save you, though, buddy. Even Tim's launching himself forward as they aim for another target. Tim's gets sunstruck. Fly and Arteezy holding their ground with a little Chen army there, killing off the Marcy. Can Boom Roshan, they're pinging it out, and it's already like two-thirds, almost half health, so they may be able to do this one with the less track and the Bristleback damage. This Rosh will fall pretty quickly here. Don't let the Wild Wing in. Don't give EG the vision. High ground ward removed no, by Fly. But Roshan's already dead. And Jackie, the one to take the Aegis there, it looked like he was hesitating, wondering if maybe Yopaj wanted it. But it will be the Bristle, now with two lives. Yeah, can't overthink when you hit the other teams charging forward and potentially coming to contest it. Just make sure one of your cores gets it, and so with a BKB in the front lines. That's that level 15, now level 16, so maxed out. 
Vicious Nasal Goo as well to go with the Agadim Scepter has a lot of damage up, with the Nether Shoal really amping up what he can do as well in these fights. That's a ridiculous amount of damage from him and the Lash. And we're closing in on BKB for FBZ. And he's just a recipe away. Arbed going to try and hold back that top wave, but Boom Glyphit, making sure the Meatball doesn't clear it out and connecting with the rest of their heroes. Up towards the top, enable Jackie here to push tier two. EG do have a little bit of vision here if they want to play into it, but right now it seems the name of the game is to dodge. Avoid everything Boom are throwing at them. Yeah, I think this is like the bristle timing where, I mean, combined with an Aegis, like your opponents get Aegis, they have this hard, well, impossible to kill twice carry. You just don't want to mess with them. You play keep away, you farm the map, they go top, you go bottom. Now they're going to smoke and try chase you. Hopefully it's just to support you dies, and then you run top. And that's exactly what EG are doing. They're playing the map as best they can. Boom, at the same time, doing a good job hunting down these heroes, killing the creeps. But the second they show bottom out of the smoke, EG's already top trying to farm their jungle away from Boom. But again, Boom, they're matching yes. this play. Okay, you go top. <laughs> now we're going top. So it's just cat and mouse constantly both these two teams. Well, boom, one team, Boom, chasing the other wherever they go. But I, I made the analogy the other day, but it's like a game of tennis, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just pushing the one side of the map to the other. Repeat, 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 but eventually you're going to run out of smokes, run out of TPs, and that's where you're going to have to really land yeah. your shots. And, you know, eventually this age just expires, and you know, you're going to hit maybe some item timings that you want to play around if you're, you're EG. And Voker's getting more and more levels. Pudge already has the Blink Dagger, so... Uh, and the Axe Scepter on Nightfall's Primal Beast is coming up soon, so it's... You know, pressure right now is on Boom to get as much as they can while they've got Aegis. How, how good is Primal Beast Ags? I, I don't think I've cast a game with it yet. Oh. Uh, I think I've seen it once, I want to say. Um, what about this game? Yeah, I'm curious what, what he sees in this. I think it was Faith Beyond when he was playing four position, actually had the Ags queued up. Maybe he didn't finish it that game. Mm. Regeneration. Uh, uh, three waves yeah, of two projectiles per it's a break. uproar. It's a break, I guess, is the big thing. You're playing against Bristleback, so oh. having a break sounds very nice. Oh man, oh, well that, that's uh, that's on a, on the list of today I learned again. As Yopaj, Sunstrike, and backs away. I was there, yeah, added, added another break to the game. Completely slipped my mind there on that one. That is very useful. And he's got it now. Big part of why they're considering this item. As Boom got the tier 2 top, as you'd often expect teams with this kind of first ages to do. I've swung mid, but with Aegis, well, it's a minute 40. They've still got time. They want to camp this Bristle on the tier 2 mid tower, but there's always that threat of like Pudge hooking someone in. Even if it's a Bristle with Aegis, you kind of force a fight. And Zartizi goes fishing, but nobody's home. All right, just a leather boot dragged back into him. They're still waiting for this BKB of Enigma. He's very close to it, but they want to use this Aegis timer to get the tier 2. Try and have a fight around Jackie while he is so strong. And they keep that lane ward top. Yopage going to keep two lanes pressed into the dire base. But EG once again playing opposite side of the map. Arbed with the boots of travel. Gets down south, continuing his farm. And getting himself towards a scythe of vice here. So an added layer of control for EG. EG have just played this keep, game of keep away very effectively. This is kind of classic old school EG Dota where they just out farm the map, but I haven't necessarily out farmed here. Jackie is Aegis. Some danger. 30 seconds remaining, and Primal yeah. Beast with a break on him. Nearly killing him the first yeah. time. The hook is there. Dragging Bristle back though. across, and you're right, he does. But the rest of Boom, they're retreating. Falling back. Try and get Jackie out of there with your rebound movement speed and sprint away. Yeah, he didn't actually get hooked in because the hook damage killed him. It meant he died in place rather than getting pulled to RTZ. So doesn't have to pop his BKB out of there. And that Aegis was expiring in 30 seconds time. So that's not really much gain for EG. Um, Boom weren't going to be looking for a team fight with it. They were just, they're playing the map themselves. They've actually turned an even game into about a 2k gold lead. So they're continuing to scale themselves, eyeing this kind of late game enigma as more as their win condition. He's itemizing to the Lincoln, so trying to make sure that he doesn't get swap cancelled. 
Same time, you know, you're Avenge and you see this Lincolns come out, you're just thinking, okay, whoever gets Black Hole, I'm going to swap them out rather than swap the Enigma. And we saw the strength of that break, though, from the Primal Beast. Two and a half seconds of it. Coming out of this uproar. And currently playing up top. Radiant had that vision in the lane, spotting a couple of these heroes moving. But EG have a high ground ward to play with here. One hero missing. Our bed is down in the bottom right-hand corner. But the jump is coming in from Boom, aiming for the Primal Beast. They won't find Nightfall. Our TZTP's home as well. EG... They've managed to avoid this again. Perhaps a limitation boom strat. I mean, they've got okay catch, like Blink Enigma, but it's not easy. It's not like the Nyx Assassin type here where you're just running around Vendetta waiting oh. and looking for a kill. EG stuck around. They've got yeah. Blink on the Venge. Sunstrike. He's getting pushed, pushed away from it, but he's still got this pulverize. Oh, is it going to be enough damage with the Black Hole from it's MPZ? Not. He's turning on them. And in comes Tim's Yopage to kill them off. How dare you? How dare oh. you fight us in our ancients, our enigma, says absolutely not, EG. EG are going to be having some talks. How, how, how to place the Sunstrike around the Primal Beast, because that, yeah, you've got to land those those Sunstrikes. It's not like it's, it's not one player or the other's fault. It's just that you got to communicate about how, you know, you're going to land these spells. I think ideally you just wait for the Pulverize and then Sunstrike, but that just completely cost CG. That was a perfect initiation, a great way to kind of pretend they'd backed off and find a kill playing around their ward, but unfortunately for them, they just mess it up. And two heroes down means Boom again are quickly out on the map. FBZ's gonna try and hold back on that bottom lane. He's he's being eyed up by Arteezy though. Lands the hook into the tree line. This time the Sun Strike it won't miss. FBZ down and out, but the TPs they're flowing bottom with Jackie and Scam arriving. Arteezy a little isolated now. The Malik Death Ward that's gonna shred through the pudge. Our bad gets away, but EG with another move going a little awry. Boom is gonna be fine with that. That's a pudge kill. Arteezy had to throw away his life just to save Abed there. So you give Abed, he's trying to tuck himself in these trees. He needs to be careful to not poke his nose out. I don't think they have the damage to deal with this Bristle, but they are bringing four heroes as if they want to go for this kill. With a, If you know Bristle's alone, you can definitely get this 4v1. Instead, they're going to find the Witch Doctor in the trees. But the Voodoo Switcheroo, yeah, it buys the three time. seconds of time. Skem still dies, but this gives a chance for Jackie to get on top of Abed into the Ghost War quickly. And no reveal here for the Bristle back. So getting the Venge in the back lines and aiming for this primal beast oh nightfall the onslaught's gonna get him the distance he needs and a good tornado keeping your at bay while flying attempting the tp succeeds away go eg our bet out of mana gonna tp home but only really losing your venge there feels pretty good with boom's response being so heavy-handed yeah they're just kind of lacking that little bit of kind of gap close on the boom side EG able to just disengage and book one of the best disengaging heroes in Dota. You've got you know, tornadoes, ice walls, all these things to cover the retreat. Combine that with four stuff and blink dagger. Killing Arbet is a really tough ass this game. And I think Boom, like, they're going for this BKB on Marcy, which is we haven't been seeing that much blink dagger on Marcy these days. It's kind of like the old build where you go like blink Aether Lens, but it almost feels like a game where they may want to consider a blink dagger just because of um, the way things are kind of progressing. Five seconds for Roche. EG scanning it, sun striking it. Might give a bit of lingering vision there to see him when he respawns. Mm, not sure. Neither team actually knows about it. And boom, just going to use this top jungle as a, a platform to hold. As Arteezy missed his initial hook. And the outpost grabbed by boom. Scattered Roshan themselves, so we'll see if they want to go into the pit. EG have smoked up, swap in. Yeah, catching out this ledge, but the black hole. They got the bench. FBZ! Ooh. He's got three of them! Beautifully done by the Enigma! Down goes the Chen Invoker. Nightfall chase down by Yopage, and Arteezy's Pudge in an awful lot of trouble. Bothered by Jackie, the four heroes chasing this Pudge, desperate for the kill, will take him down! What a black hole! FBZ with the BKB black hole found the venge plus the cores that's the thing like this venge is meant to you know represent the, the bkb black hole cancel but 
once he shows himself and once he uses the swap to initiate, most importantly, it's on cooldown. So it doesn't even matter if you catch the Venge or not. That swap's on. That's the thing. Like, this Venge is meant to, you know, represent the, the BKB Black Hole cancel, but. Once he shows himself, and once he uses the swap to initiate, most importantly, it's on cooldown. So it doesn't even matter if you catch the Venge or not. That swap's on cooldown, so his team fight is just so easy there. FBZ just finding the team fight for Boom. Absolute perfection. And they're on high ground taking tier three now. Evil geniuses, a lot on their plate to contend with this Boom squad playing so quickly off the back of Jackie's Bristleback. Melee racks focus down. And they are gonna retreat now. Roshan is still ready to be claimed by Boom if they want to head there. And that's what's being pinged out by EG. They need 15 seconds for Pudge to respawn, but they're going to have to swiftly move to contest this. And they don't have an outpost, so they can smoke us four here without the Pudge, but where does Pudge like he's gonna respawn and he can't TP into an outpost? So it's essentially a 4v5. They'll scout out with the Sunstrike, but Bristleback minus armor. Hyperstone, Satanic, he's killing this way too fast for EG to respond to. And Scam, perfect position here. Charge he's in. gonna scout them out. The charge in, but Jackie gets the Aegis. Nightfall, he's being pummeled now by the Bristleback as the bouncing magic missiles do get in on top of Scam and Yopage. Oh, they've killed off Nightfall though. And Chen, the next on the menu. Wraith pack dropped, but down he goes. A double for Jackie. The aggression is relentless. He did steal the Ag Shard with the Onslaught in, but given that Boom get the Aegis and got a couple of kills and now can push high ground in the top lane, I don't feel like EG are going to think it's worth it. And that's just such a, a tricky position to be in. Like, you're 4v5, you don't want to give up another Aegis because you know that's going to lead to a high ground push, but the end result is, you, you know, you, it's a disadvantageous fight when you're playing 4v5 without your punch. Yeah, it feels like EG don't really have a way to stop them once they reach the high ground now. You can see Crit, Arteezy, they're out on the map trying to push these other lanes, giving up this top set of barracks. Need some more time here for the Primal Beast to respawn. Dangerous territory though for EG. And four minutes left on this Aegis. And they're doing this without the black hole. That's up in 15 seconds time. And that's going to be up with the Lincoln Sphere if FBC gets a little bit more room to farm. They definitely can wait for it. There's no rush. Still almost four full minutes of Aegis to play around. So it does seem like they're going to be prioritizing FBC finishing this item. And once he's got BKB plus Lincolns, you're, you're not dealing with this enigma. It feels like in a team fight. Yeah, cool little stuff from Tim's as well. He's got this illusion rune where his Cloak of Flames Marcy is actually like dragging waves around bottom, scouting out into the enemy triangle. Made life a little more challenging for Arteezy to push this bot lane. It looks like he's, he's going to have to TP away from here because boom, angling straight down into the bottom right corner and scanning the Pudge. They know he's there. The blink in, the Shiver's Vision. A little close for comfort for Arteezy, but he is safe with the rest of his team now. Posturing as if they want to defend the tier 2 tower. They've got the high ground more. Being scattered by these Eidolons. Boom doing a good job. Trying to play around Vision here. And they've smoked up. Just fearless from Jackie game. though. Yeah. Well, they found Nightfall in the trees though. He has to onslaught away. And he may not be out of danger just yet. Has a BKB but won't need to pop it. And Jackie. Onto that tier 2 again. Everybody grouping back up around the bristle. I don't think you can go on him. Two lives, and I don't think you kill him for during the first life with the Satanic there. Like, he just survives through everything. But the position here, you want to catch this FBZ Enigma. Can they catch vision of him? Right now, he's just staying out of Observer Ward vision. This dire mm -hmm. Observer on the cliff is so key. And he's keeping his idol on to the right side of his hero. Oh, they see him, but he gets out. Yeah, boom, not entertaining that fight. They've got two lanes pushing in. They know that at some point, EG, they have to come back and defend. And now Primal Beast shows a chance for Boom to retake that little part of the map down bottom and keep this wave pushing. But Arbed's cut the wave. Teezy still in these trees. Skem going to run right into him. Oh, he gets the dismember. Sunstrike. Skem taken down. And Boom, a little afraid of fighting into the tree line there. 
they understand what's going on now. They ping out the high ground cliff saying this is this is warded, they're camping it. Let's play around our cliff, our ward. There's no reason to be in that part of the map other than pushing bottom lane, but you can kind of either bypass it or send your bristle and you've got nages. You don't care if he They've caught Abed. They've caught Abed. FBC, he's forward with a stun. Doesn't even black hole yet. Dismember from Arteezy onto the Marcy. But Jackie stacking up the nasal goo onto this pudge. And the black hole's there. Solo down Arteezy. Dead for 70 seconds. And Jackie's hunting onto crit now. Vengeful Spirit, not a chance in hell. EG lose three. And the high ground is in danger. Boom. Coming closer and closer. Mega Crypt is a team with their life on the line here at TI. They've got to get the 2-0, and they're so close to this game one victory. They're getting closer and closer. The Scythe of Ice, though, with a bit of break onto Jackie. Pulverized down, and his first life's gone. Swap there, though, onto Tim's. In comes Yopaj with AoE damage. Getting onto Crit and bringing the Venge down. Nightfall trying to escape, but he's stunned up. Can't onslaught away. We'll have buyback, though, as EG need to mount a defense to this final lane of barracks. Nightfall returns to the battlefield. But your buildings, they're already crumbling. The this base has been quick. shaken. Boom with the earthquake. A damage in onto Flyer Nightfall now. And GG is called. Boom with a game one victory. That's the thing. This is a team that may be sitting at the bottom of their group, but they won one of the first big international lands of the season. Their potential for Boom has always been there. But when it comes to this Singapore land, they just haven't quite delivered. But we finally get to see a little glimpse of what Boom is capable of here. And, you know, this story may be not quite yet over for Boomer. 2 could put them in a tiebreaker scenario. What a way to get things started here. My glasses are all fogged up from the excitement in that game. <laughs> I gotta wipe the sweat off my brow and get ready for...